We're going to begin the reading today in 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 3. First, knowing this, that during the last day, scoffers will come, walking according to their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue this way from the beginning of creation. For this is hidden from them by their willing it so, the heavens were of old, and earth by water, and through water being held together by the word of God, through which the world, which then was, being flooded by water, perished. But the heavens and the earth now, having been stored up by the same word, are being kept for fire to a day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But let not this one thing be hidden from you, beloved, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not as slow to the promise, as some deem slowness, but is long-suffering towards us, not having purposed any of us to perish, but all of us to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with rushing the sound, and having burned the elements will be dissolved, and earth and the works in it will be burned up. Then all these being about to be dissolved, what sort ought you to be in holy behavior and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, through which the heavens being set afire will be dissolved, and the elements will melt? But according to his promise, we look for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. She reads much better than I do. I have a tad bit of dyslexia, so... It's harder for me to read, especially out of the um, interlinear Bible. Anyways, <clears throat> so last night I was sitting on my, my porch and I said something to my wife, Angie, that, um, that stuck out to me as I said it. And I just said, it feels like, it feels like the earth is running a fever. Um, and what I mean by that is here in Texas, you know, we get hot in the summertime, but anything above 102, 103 is exceedingly hot. And we have been above 106 for weeks. Um, I've seen 110, 111 degrees on my drive home. And it's, you know, it's oppressive. But... With that being said, in, in a previous video, I made sure to to uh, say that we are so lucky here in Texas that we are not getting all of the the wildfires, all of the flooding, all of the tornadoes. Um, but I think this is much more than than climate change. Um, this is this is a warning, and so. What my wife just read um, was talking about God's long suffering. And this is part of it. This is part of his long suffering. He wishes that none of us would would go into the fiery pit. Um, he doesn't want any of us to go to hell. Hell was not designed for humans. Hell was designed for the fallen angels, for Satan and his fallen angels. But if we if we choose to follow Satan and his fallen angels, then we are subject to the same punishment as Satan. Um, God doesn't want that to happen. Let me prove this. Um, so Ezekiel 33, and I'm sorry I do not read as, as good as my wife does, but um, Ezekiel 33 verse 11 says, Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? So let me get back to um, earlier. I said that it feels like it feels like um, we're uh, Texas is running a fever. Um, What this is, is a, uh, it's a warning. Um, the severe weather is a warning. It, it is, 
It is telling people, hey, you need to go repent. This is God saying, you can't fix this. There's nothing you can do to fix this. You can you can delay the the lack of water by taking water from one lake and transferring it to another lake, like they're doing here in Texas. Um, they're taking water from the uh, lower populated areas and they're transferring it to the big cities like Austin. And um, they're just they're just uh, trying to find a way to save themselves. But what God is trying to say is not trying to say this is what God is 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 saying is is hey here's my warning I am long suffering I I don't want you to I don't want you to be cast into hell with Satan and his angels I want you to live forever I want you to um, live in my presence and and so he is giving us very severe signs these are the beginnings of the birth pains that are talked about in Matthew 24 um, right now we're just seeing the beginning we're you know tornadoes I, I'm hearing about tornadoes up north where I've never heard about tornadoes if there have been tornadoes um, you know maybe it's like a once-in-a-lifetime event um, just like the the hurricane off of the coast of um, uh, California it's a once-in-a-lifetime event um, but how many once in a lifetime events do we have to see to understand that, hey, this is not humans driving cars. You know, that, that's not why this is happening. This is not because we have stoves that, that burn gas. But this is because of our sin. And really, our sin nature is what causes us to be so um, irreverent with, with the planet we live on. And so, yeah maybe we shouldn't drive cars so much. Maybe we should ride bicycles. Maybe um, we should have wood burning stoves instead of gas stoves. Although I think gas is much cleaner than, than burning uh, wood. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that we could do better. God's asking us to repent. He's, he's giving us signs. I mean, how many more signs do we need? Let me give you an example. Us driving cars and having gas stoves and eating meat is not causing earthquakes. So maybe we could we could play off some of this this hot weather or crazy weather to a type of climate change that has been um, produced by humans. Maybe, but what about the earthquakes? Um, the amount of earthquakes that are happening on a daily basis is outstanding. All this is is written about in Matthew 24 or Luke 21, 22, um, and Mark 13. Um, you, you can go and look this up and, and see that we have been warned, but we are not we are not waking up to the warning. We want things to keep on going as they have gone since the, the beginning of creation. These last, these last days before the rapture of the church, we need to be out there warning people and telling them to repent. That's the, that's the, um, the word that everybody needs to hear is repent and turn back to God. And they need to know that they have a savior that paid for their sins. And if they don't accept it, that's not on you. That's not on me. But if we don't warn them, that is on you and that is on me. So here's something that's happening in Jerusalem. Um, and this this really, out of all the news feed that I, I scrolled through on um, uh, Amir Sarfati's um, telegram, this is the one that, that caught my attention the most. Over 25,000 came to the Western Wall ahead of Yom Kippur to ask for forgiveness from God. They begged him to send his peace upon the land and the people. And, it's, and what I'm looking at is a picture of a mass of people standing in front of the Western Wall. And they are, they are begging God and they are repenting. And that's what we need to be doing too. 
like I said, it's all written. It's all written. So, yeah, here in Texas, Texas is running a fever because Texas has become cold. And and it's not the temperature that's cold. It's the it's our it's our spiritual temperature that is cold. Um, we have be, become complacent. And God is providing warning. He is just hoping that we will wake up and repent and turn to the one who he sent to save us. That's all you have to do. So don't if you're if you're watching this and 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 you are not a believer in the one and only true God, the one who cared enough to send himself as as a sacrifice for for our sins, then right now is the time to to turn to him and and ask him into your life. Ask him Ask him to reveal himself to you. Um, I recommend you read the, the Gospel of John and the Book of Acts. Gospel of John, great, great writing. And, and the Book of Acts is a good picture of what the church is supposed to look like. So, in tying this up, I just want to say it's time to repent. It has been time to repent. It is time to go and tell others to repent. Go tell people to repent. Go tell them that there is a Savior who who loves them and, and took their wrath from God so that they could have eternal life and, and spend eternity with God on the new heaven and the new earth. And it's going to be beautiful. Anyways, shalom. Oh, Dennis says hi.